We'll call the uh, Cates and Spings Regional Planning Commission meeting to order. Um, roll call of uh, voting members Keith Allgood. Present. Tony Campbell. Here. Tom Cullen. Here. Tony Gross. Here. Ryan McCain's absent. Mike Batnum's here. Glenn Remick. Here. Chuck Slater. Here. And Sharon Armstrong is absent. Is that right, John? That's correct. She has the flu. Okay. Glad, John, she's, here. Glad she's not here. John Wallace. Here. And Jennifer No. Here. All right. So we have a quorum. And you also have before you the January 10th Planning Commission minutes. Do we have a motion to approve? Them? We have a correction to the bids. Okay. On page two. Chair Cantonel would open the floor for nomination of Planning Commission Secretary. Can all, all good nominated Chuck Slater. Slater is spelled wrong. <laughs> oh, my apologies. Oh. <laughs> you should apologize because everyone after that is spelled correctly. I'm <laughs> from my mistake. All right. Were there, were there any other errors, Chuck? <laughs> no. Okay. So we had a motion to approve them. As amended. As amended. I second. Okay, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the minutes are approved. You also now have today's meeting agenda before you. Do I have a motion to approve it? So moved. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the agenda is approved. Uh, old business, it's just a standing item. I'm just going to read it. Uh, rezone request for West Kingston Springs Road, BAT 96K. Um, group D, parcel 56. Indian Point Partners rezoned from R2 to R3 in acceptance of a PUD overlay criteria established by the Planning Commission for proposed commercial development. How are you? Hey. We're just going over the beginning huh? of the agenda. So uh, that's a standing item. Any, any questions or comments about it? Uh, Mr. Chair, I did have a meeting with Mr. Francis last week for a couple of reasons. One, two, we get an update on his progress with the, the system development, and two, let him know that his uh, year on the agenda will expire April 12th okay. of this year, uh, which is just the day after the April 11th Planning Commission. So he'll be on the next two months, and then will not be on anymore. His 12 months will have expired. He is uh, still working with the Homeowners Association for Bluffs of the Harpeth hopes to have something resolved with them in the next few weeks and that's his last outstanding item before he can then approach the planning commission again with his development. Okay. All right. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Any other questions on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So new business. We have a final plat submission by Thornton's group for 126 Lavin Hills Road. I believe that's what we have before us. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, did you want to present what you have? Sure. Yeah. Mr. Commissioner. Hi. Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, thank you for hearing us this evening. Um, so before you have two different plats, and one was the plat that you approved way back in November of 2017. Actually, could I point a clarification? Yes, sir. They do have two separate plats in front of them. One is the plat that is currently on file with lots one and two separated by the horizontal line. Okay. The second plat that they have in front of them is the same plat with the site plan overlay for clarity. Just okay. A, just an exhibit, really. It's not at this point just an exhibit. Right. Yes. Yeah, we just wanted to demonstrate the, the extent of the grading along the back of the site there with that slope and how we came to divide the lot as such uh, along the end of that slope as it uh, uh, flattened out towards the back of the property. So that's, uh, that's what the change on the original plat that was approved in November 2017. Uh, the, the owners changed because uh, Dillard Investments and Triple J no longer own the property and we closed on it. So Thornton's Inc. is shown as the owner. And then that one lot line is added. And I think there was an electrical easement that was removed because it was no longer there. There was no service there. And those are that's the extent of the changes from the original plat that was approved. Is that the original right there? And, and really, really, Todd was referring to the plat from November of 2017. Mm -hmm. This this plat that you see, the lot configuration on this plat that you see before you was actually approved in. I believe July of 2018 uh, and in talking with Sharon and John there was three conditions put on the approval of that plat. Lot, again lot configuration was the same thing 
But there was three conditions. One was, was that it, the purpose of that plat was for acquisition purposes. Because we were going back and forth trying to figure out where, how, how was Thornton's gonna, gonna actually purchase the property because it was one full property and a portion of a second property that wasn't platted and so was that gonna be done by deed or was that gonna be done by plat? Initially we thought we were gonna record that plat first with Dillard's and Triple J as the owners. Okay. And then Thornton's would actually purchase those two lots, those new platted lots from those owners. And then we would come back in and refile a plat with Thornton's as the owner. Turned out through the legal counsel that they were able to actually purchase the properties by deed and not need to go through and plat the properties first. So they carved out the piece of Triple J by deed, purchased that. So before any plat was recorded, Thornton's actually owned the lot. Um, so that kind of just messed with the with the initially planned process uh, order of operations, if, if you so will. So you have the requisite step, right? Right. The first sure. Plan, yeah. And then um, and then the other the other condition was that it doesn't supersede any prior uh, site plan, grading plan, lighting plan, signage plan, any plans that have previously been approved. So. We're, we're still in agreement. That note is actually still on the plat as it's recorded at the courthouse today. We're not trying to change the site plan. We're not trying to change the grading plan. We're not trying to change any plan, which I think was some of the initial concern. Um, we're just trying to carve up the lots as shown in that, in that July um, approval of the plat. And the only reason Sharon really wanted us to come back was there was one condition that said this plat requires us to come back before the Planning Commission and, and get reapproved. Uh, so we, we've actually already recorded the plat that you see in front of, in front of you. We're now back for reapproval to make sure that everything is fine with the, with the recorded plat. So ideally, uh, we think that this plat is, meets the conditions of the July 2018 approval. It's been recorded. Uh, we would hope to not have to re-record it because June 2018, sorry. Uh, yeah, we would hope to not have to go back through the signatures and the recording process because really we don't think anything uh, needs to needs to change on the, on the plat. So we're hoping we can get an approval from the Planning Commission tonight, leave the plat recorded as it is, and be on our way. Okay, so um, John, are you familiar with all this? Yes. Okay. I've got a couple of things to add. Okay. The, um, as Zach mentioned, the Flat before you with lots one and two. Um, Thorpe's brought to uh, the Planning Commission and it was approved in July of 2018 for the purpose of acquire, acquiring the property. And the property has been acquired. Um, this uh, plat has been filed with lot one and two, as you see here. In our discussions with Sharon and I and uh, representatives from Thornton, we asked them to overlay the site plan on this plat so we can see how lot one and the site plan tied together. And for us, they tied together satisfactorily. So uh, as far as lot one and lot two, uh, we have no umbrance with the way that the property is divided. Um, however, we did ask that the site plan be overlaid again for our clarification and feel that moving forward, it might be best to have a site plan recorded or a plat recorded with that site plan overlay. The other thing that I'd like to mention is that in that July 2018 movie meeting, the, um, the motion was to approve the plat revision with the following stipulations. As Zach has said, the proposed revision is to simplify the acquisition of the properties. A subsequent plat will be resubmitted when the properties are acquired by Thornton's and the plat revision does not change the scope of the approved site plan, grading plan, signage, design review, construction plans, lighting, or other approved development plans for the project. So um, it was in the minutes for a subsequent plat to be resubmitted. However, it's at the pleasure of the commission what they would like to do. What is the recommendation of our attorney and you? The recommendation from myself and the city planner would be for a subsequent plat to be filed with the site plan overlay just for future clarification. As we're looking at it here. Correct. With mm -hmm. the site plan on it. So moved. Second. Any discussion? So just just can I ask a clarification question? I mean typically a plat won't have 
proposed grading and contours and, and um, that much information on it, that's why it gets cluttered and difficult to read and difficult to comprehend, which is why we submitted an exhibit. Um, so I, I, I don't know if that's not really a question, but more of just a concern that um, I guess that would, that's not typical for a final plat. That might be typical for a preliminary plat or for a site plan. But again, I, the note on there says that it, clearly the plat doesn't change any plan approval that we've got, and we're not asking for that. Um, and I don't think, in terms of a plat, I mean, a plat's intended to subdivide or consolidate property. Showing that doesn't doesn't change any of that. Um, I'm not I'm not totally sure what we gain by that, except maybe future clarification. I'm yeah. not sure. I'm not sure you gain, but we gain. <laughs> what, what are we clarifying? <laughs> We're clarifying that the site plan, as it's stated in the current development, stays as it is shown on this particular plot, and that's what will be recorded. But again, I'm not sure the plat really, I mean, the plat is intended for the, the boundary, carving the boundaries of the property, right? So I agree, it's, it's, not, it's not something that's usually done on a plat, especially a final, but it's not something that's out of the scope of what can be done. Todd? Okay, I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay. That resolves the issue and we can re-record the plat. And I think maybe the reason Sharon was wanting to be a part of that is because the topography of Lot 2 um, has more issues, I think, in just making sure where everything's laying on Lot 1. So just to clarify on that. Okay. So, John, do you want to see the site plan, the grading plan, both plans? I would like to see the plat as it is filed currently with the site plan overlaid as the example that you've supplied to us. So okay. that's the like, I'm, I'm so good. Good. site plan and grading plan. Yes, sir. Okay. Just want to make sure that we give you what you want. Yes, sir. Don't have to come back again. <laughs> so, John, this is what you want, what we're looking at? Is that this is what you want recorded? Yes, sir. That's what you want recorded? Yes. What's recorded now is just the lot one the and lot two, right. and they supplied as an example the site plan overlaid on that right. flat that's recorded. Right. And that's what we'd like. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. Are there any other questions or discussion? Okay. So um, the motion is, can somebody say it again? <laughs> I believe the motion was, as John explained it, to resubmit the, uh, re-record the, the, the plot with the uh, site plan, with the site plan the overlaid on it. Okay. And that was, was the motion and okay. second it done. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Um, thank you. Thank you. So we'll all submit right. that to you, John, and for signature, and then we can record? Yes, yes, we'll get signatures as soon as we get. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank, you. thank you, John. Thank you very much. Um, any other business? Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, uh, Tony has some. Well, I. You talked, you talked the last time about uh, more of a planning process. And I know Sharon has talked some about it a lot. One of the things that I want you to take to her is, I think it's great to do a community plan for input from the community as to what they desire and what their vision is. But I also think that it's important for this body to take, sit down and take what we have out there now and look at it and see what's there and how we're going to do it. I just, I don't think any of us have a real comprehension of where the PUDs are now and various things like that. So sort of a workshop with the planning commission? Well, that would be fine, however you want to do it. And are you thinking, Tony, that's preliminary to the community planning process, or no, it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter to me. Right. I, I, I just, just kind of want a good idea of where everything is now. Right. If someone comes to me and asks me where we could put a grocery store, I wouldn't know. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So, John, you have that for action? Yes, sir. Okay. Is this for the region or for the city? The town? The city. I don't know how much impact other than the zoning that we have outside of the city. I'd like to see what it is. I think it's all like E1 probably. 
Well, I don't have any problem looking at the, the entire planning region. I, I like the idea of the region. I remember not long ago when I think Bayham was going to put a development, mm -hmm. and we had a whole bunch of people come in here. Most <laughs> ever. And it was, uh, you know, it'd be nice if we kind of had an idea where that was going. You're talking about more of the urban growth area. I'm thinking the city and the urban growth area. Right? Yeah, well, that's a planning the, region. Yeah, right. the, the region. region. So, yeah, I think that'd be very helpful. Yes. So I call it the North Cut sign over at Maximum Lot. After that meeting. Um, I mean, it might be useful to do it after the uh, after the community planning thing. Then we would have what was gathered from that. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah, we, we could have it work from the from the citizens. Well, I, I see the community planning process is dragging out for quite a while. Well, Sharon and I have already started two and sessions, I believe. Right. We've got the, we, initially we plan on three sessions. One with me presenting as a very basic 101 planning, planning process and zoning. Sharon with the second meeting with a more in-depth, uh, this is um, straight line planning where you've got residential over here, commercial over here, industrial over here compared to multi-use planning where you've got commercial and, and residential <laughs> living together in harmony. And then uh, the third meeting would be uh, more economic development. What types of industries and businesses look at Kingston Springs? What do they look at in general? How does that process flow? And we'll work with the um, JT at the uh, Joint Economic Community Development Board to structure that third meeting. So we're... It sounds like it's about probably a four or five month planning process. Well, we, hopefully we have, we want to have these meetings probably every two weeks. So um, we've got the first Six one we planned, or, well not planned, but we got the first one structured and, and, and we got a, a, a wireframe of what we're going to talk about. So well, within I, uh, a month we should be able to plan it. I guess some of us are getting older all the time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it's something that's needed and I think it's needed now rather than later. So we're we're on top of it. Okay. Any other business? Okay. Uh, we'll be adjourned. All right. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting's adjourned.